Hi, I'm Tim Sales. This short clip is to respond to the claim most people fail at MLM or network marketing. My first thought on this is to question who would make this claim? Please ponder that. It should reveal to you that the person is pretending to be a victim. My guess is someone is simply trying to justify why they quit network marketing or never started. If you looked at the statistics of how many people make money compared to how many don't make money in network marketing, you could draw the conclusion that yes, less people make money than do not. But why people act as though this is any different than anything else is unknown to me, because the same could be said about anything people attempt. By the way, every time I say fail, I want you to picture the word fail in quotes. I'll explain why in a couple of minutes. Factually, most people who open a stock trading account fail at trading stocks. Most people who get into real estate fail at selling even one real estate property. Most people who want to sing at the opera fail. Most people who want to play professional sports fail. Most people who want to start a business fail. Most people who want to play a musical instrument fail. Most people who want to get into shape fail. So while it's true that most people fail at network marketing, it's also true that most people fail at every pursuit. The wise and logical thing to do is not look at the percentage that failed, but to look at what they did to fail versus what people that succeeded did to succeed. For those who have never been in network marketing, please allow me to explain to you how misleading this claim that most people fail actually is. To get into a network marketing company, it typically takes less than $50 to purchase a starter kit, which is all that is required to join a company. And logically, a new person will purchase some products so they'll know what they're selling. So let's say it costs a total of $300 for the products in the starter kit. Now, according to the people who claim that most people fail, if that person who bought their kit stops doing the business at any time in the future, they failed. That's how that statistic is calculated. But get this. In most network marketing companies, if the person quits, they could send the products back within a certain time and get a refund. So their true loss is only the $50 starter kit and maybe a product restocking fee. One of the main network marketing companies will give you a 100% refund on products and the starter kit if returned within 30 days. In fact, you get a 90% refund if you return the products within a full year. Let me put this into perspective for you. A couple of years ago, I watched Tiger Woods playing golf on TV. He was having a blast, and he made it look so easy. So I thought I wanted to play golf. I grabbed my wife, and we went to a golf driving range near our house. We just happened to have our camera with us so we can recreate this experience for you. We weren't horrible at it and thought it would be fun and challenging to get involved with golf. We both went down to the local golfsmith store and bought some golf clubs, bags, shoes, balls, and a couple of training books and DVDs. Walked out an hour later having spent $4,000. Went to the driving range a few times to practice, which cost us about $20 each trip. We played a couple of times at a local golf course for about $80 plus $30 to ride in a little golf cart. So it was about $110 each time we played. I then read about a beautiful golf course in Naples, Florida at the Ritz-Carlton Resort. We drove there and it cost us about $700 a night to stay at the hotel and $200 each to play the course. That day, we played, it was around 100 degrees outside, and we sweated for four hours straight. I played terrible and hated the experience. I hated it primarily because I performed terribly and the heat made it very uncomfortable. We left Naples having spent $1,200. When we got home, I threw the clubs in the garage and haven't played since. So my golf experience cost me about $5,000, of which none of it was refundable. Why didn't I post up a website and write about how the golf industry is ripping people off, and when you look at the statistics, the odds of playing golf like Tiger Woods is less than .0001%? Why didn't I scream and yell about the unfairness that the actual cost of the golf club is only about $6, but Golfsmith charged me $100 each club? I didn't post a website like that because I'm not playing victim. I know what happened. I didn't fail at golf. I quit. Allow me to point out some similarities between my golf experience and network marketing. Watching Tiger Woods having fun was like me going to a business presentation and getting excited. Going to the driving range with my wife was like asking a friend to join me. It looked fun and we thought we would be able to do well at it. 
Buying the golf clubs and all of the gear was like buying a starter kit with some products, although I spent a lot more money on golf clubs. Buying the books and training DVDs is similar to buying the training materials in network marketing. The fact that I didn't perform to my expectations that day in Naples is very similar to someone not having immediate success in network marketing. What I am sure of is that every person who is a professional golfer has had days where they didn't play to their expectations, but they evidently didn't quit. They stuck to it. Their interest in being great at golf was greater than their interest in quitting. The truth is, I didn't fail at golf. I quit golf. All the millions and millions of people who have golf clubs in their garage and aren't playing golf now didn't fail at golf either. They quit. The true facts are, it takes no effort to quit network marketing. Just throw your kit in the garage and not do it anymore. That's all it takes to quit. So when you hear people claim that most people fail in network marketing, picture all the golf clubs in people's garages, all the gym memberships that are inactive, all the in-home exercise equipment that have clothes hanging on them and haven't been used in months, all the musical instruments sitting unused in their cases, and all the real estate no money down seminar tape sets sitting in the closets or on the bookshelves unused. If someone is going to claim to you that most people fail or most don't make money in network marketing, ask them to put it into perspective compared to all the other things people attempt to do. If they have integrity, they will say, it isn't any different. Most people quit at everything. In fact, in my early days, I did quit network marketing for about two weeks, then decided that I wasn't going to quit because it was my only shot at making big money. I devoted myself to learning the business and went on to earn a lot of money, just like anyone who has ever accomplished great things in their life. The decision someone makes on the day they get involved or the day they buy a business starter kit is not the important one. The important one is the decision they make when they realize what it's really going to take to succeed. If Tiger Woods could have walked on the golf course and played as well as he does with only a couple of months of practice, Nike wouldn't pay him $100 million to wear their logo. Tiger is great because he worked his guts out. Network marketing isn't any different. Business, very simply, is a person or a company making people's lives better. What one needs to learn to accomplish that in network marketing is communication skills. And communication skills are just like a golf swing. It's something you learn, not something you're born with. My point in having you visualize the word fail in quotes is that people don't fail at things. They quit before they've learned the necessary skills to do them. That's all. So quitting is not the same as failing. While I'm on this issue, let me also comment briefly on the claim your odds of making big money in MLM are slim to none. I'm sorry to be disrespectful to the people who make this claim, but this is an irrelevant claim. If I want to get fit, what are the odds that I actually will? Huh? That seems like an irrelevant question, doesn't it? Why? Because odds have nothing to do with me getting off the couch and tossing the potato chips in the trash. Odds are incorrectly used when performance can alter the odds. If I roll a die, there's no performance involved. So someone can say the odds of rolling a three are one-sixth. Or if I flip a coin, there's no performance involved. The odds are 50-50. If I buy a lottery ticket, there's no performance involved. Therefore, odds can come into play. But if I'm trying to put a little white ball into a hole on the golf course, there's performance involved. If I'm trying to build a business, there's performance involved, and odds are irrelevant. Performance is, has been, and always will be based on knowledge and training. That's how anyone gets better at anything. My son asked me a question that I'd love to know how you would have answered. Here's his question. Dad, what are the odds of me making the school golf team? If it was your son, how would you have answered it? Well, my answer was, son, odds have nothing to do with it. Your performance dictates whether you make the golf team, not your odds. Anyone who achieves anything noteworthy in life does so by getting the right training. I suggest you do the same. I'm Tim Sales.